right, in this video, we're gonna look at how to find the monthly mortgage payment on several different calculators. And I'm going to use different calculators because the techniques that you use will be a little bit different depending on which calculator you have. The calculators that I will be showing you here are the TI-30X MultiView. They do have a TI-30X that is not a MultiView, but I will show you how to tackle this same problem using that calculator as well. Of course, I'll have to use this one because I don't have the one that's not a MultiView, but the button presses will be identical. Once I show you this calculator, you will also be able to apply that to the TI-34 MultiView. That's this calculator right here. These two calculators are pretty much identical in terms of what you need to know for this class or this particular topic here. There's no difference in the buttons that we will press. And we will actually look at the TI-84 Plus first because that's probably the most popular calculator, the most commonly used. But just hang out through the video. I'll give you tips on all of these various calculators. And ultimately, no matter how we do it, if we do it correctly, it will lead to the correct answer. Now the TI-83, I will show you the classic approach using the TI-83. Of course, I only have the TI-84, but the button presses will be the same. So we wanna calculate the monthly payment for a mortgage loan of $200,000 with a fixed APR of 3% paid off in 25 years. This is our formula for an installment loan with a fixed APR, and that's exactly what we have, a fixed APR. So to find the monthly mortgage payment, we want to plug in some numbers for all of this, and then ultimately we want to type this into the calculator. So what do all these variables or words or letters represent? The P is the principal. That's the starting loan amount of $200,000. We're gonna multiply by the APR over N. So times the APR. The APR is 3%. I recommend converting that to a decimal. So 0 0.03 or just 0 0.03 is fine. Divided by N, N is 12. Why is N equal to 12? N is the number of payments you make per year. Since we're doing monthly payments, we make 12 monthly payments per year. Now we're going to divide this by the rest of this stuff and we have these square brackets. Depending on what calculator you have, you may or may not need to use these. But instead of me using square brackets, I'm just going to treat them as parentheses. No difference, I promise. So we have one minus another set of parentheses, one plus the APR over N. So that's gonna be one plus this same fraction right here, 0.03 over 12. Let's close that up. And now for this exponent, we want to take negative n times y. And now again, depending on what calculator you have, you may or may not need to use these parentheses. But for now, I'll just write them down. So we have negative 12 because that's negative n, the number of payments per year, times the number of years. That's what that y stands for. So 25 years, that is going to be the length of our loan that we have to pay off. Close up the exponent and then that square bracket that we have here, I'm just using an extra parentheses. So really what we have here is some numerator divided by some denominator. Now I said I was gonna start with the TI-84 first and that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I have it typed in multiple ways, but let me go over this with you step by step. Zoom on in so we can see that pretty good. Now the TI-84 Plus, first of all, if we go to mode, make sure math print is highlighted. And you can come up here to math print and you can put it on classic or math print. Now if you don't have this option, hang out. I will show you the classic approach, which is how the TI-83 would need to be done. But math print is highlighted. Now we can quit out of this menu by pressing second and mode. We're quitting. Now let's press the alpha button and let's press Y equals. It's going to bring up a couple of commands. The first one here is the one we want to use, numerator slash denominator. Press enter on that. And this fraction bar that we have here is actually going to be this long fraction bar here. Now, if your calculator does have this feature, fantastic. We can type in everything pretty much how we see it. As a matter of fact, we can actually delete a few things. So I'm doing the 200,000 times the 0.03. For this fraction bar, you don't have to use another fraction. We can simply use division here. 
And when I press division, notice it does give a little slash and we put our 12. So this is our entire numerator. Now we can press the down arrow to go to the bottom and we actually don't even need to use these here. I tell you what though, I'm just gonna go ahead and use them anyway for now and I'll come back and remove them in a moment. So we have one minus and then we have one plus. Make sure you do use these parentheses here. 0.03 divided by 12, close it up. And now we're ready for an exponent. The exponent button on the TI-83 or 84 is above the division key. And notice what happens when I press that button. It rows it up and visually this looks like an exponent. Now, if your calculator will do that, you don't have to use these parentheses either, but I tell you what, I'm gonna use them anyway. Just to show you, I'm typing it in exactly like I see it. And now let's get out of this exponent by using the right arrow key. Notice it did move down. Let's close it up and let's press enter. So our monthly mortgage payment would be $948.42. I'm gonna press second and enter to bring back up this same thing we just typed in. And I mentioned there were a couple of parentheses that we don't really need on this particular calculator. So I'm taking away all the ones that we don't need. And the only ones I'm really keeping are this group right here. It is important to keep those there. But if I press enter on this, removing the parentheses from the beginning and the end of our denominator, as well as the parentheses from the exponents, we still get the same answer. Now let's act like we don't have this fraction bar or our exponent does not work like this. Well, what do I mean? I'm gonna to go to mode and I'm gonna put it on classic. This is how the TI-83 would be handled. I'm gonna quit out of this second mode. And this is the best practice when you're in classic mode or if your calculator does not have a fraction button. I recommend grouping your entire numerator in parentheses. And in this case, we don't really have to, but it's still good practice. You cannot go wrong with doing it like this. So what I've done here is I've grouped my entire numerator. I've closed it up. Now, this long fraction bar is simply going to be a division. And now we want to close our entire denominator up. So notice I'm starting a parentheses, which is essentially that one right there. So now I'm gonna type in everything exactly like I see it. And I want you to watch what happens when we get to the exponent. Now, on my particular calculator, you may notice that it does wrap to the next line. Your calculator may not do that. It may just keep on going. But watch what happens now. We're ready for this exponent. Now, when I press this button in classic mode, it does not go up. It just shows this little symbol here. Well, this is where it is important to use the parentheses. Negative 12 times 25. We're telling the calculator, hey, I want you to raise it to this power. And since this power is in a group, it's going to raise it to all of this. Very important to use parentheses there. That is unless you did go ahead and multiply negative 12 by 25. So this parentheses here closes that. Now let's use one more. And if we press enter, notice we get the exact same answer. So multiple approaches on the TI-84. This classic approach is how you would have to do it on a TI-83. And now I have the TI-30X and the TI-34, the multi-views, they're pretty much the same, especially regarding this problem. Now I already have it typed in various ways here. I'm gonna do some of the same things I just did a moment ago. Let's take the fraction approach first. Your buttons are a little bit different than the 84. We had this n slash d. If we press that, there's our numerator denominator. And now we can type it in exactly like we see it. Some things to notice here. When I divided by 12 on the TI-84, it was a slash, but on these calculators, it is an actual division symbol. No difference. Now, if you did watch where I did the TI-84, I typed it in exactly like I saw it, but we could actually leave some of these parentheses off. But to play it safe, you can type them in exactly like you see it. Closing that up, check out what happens when we do the exponent. The exponent key on these calculators is over here on the left-hand side. When I press that, it goes up. If your calculator does this, you don't necessarily need these parentheses here, but I'll tell you what, I'm just gonna put them there anyway. Now make sure you get out of the exponent by using the right key. It will move down that cursor, closing up the entire bottom, 
pressing enter, we get the same answer. Now, if you have a scientific calculator that does not have this fraction key, then you need to take the classic approach like I showed you on the TI-84 when I put it in classic mode. Well, if you didn't check that out, here it is. I'm gonna group my entire numerator, all of this stuff up here. I'm gonna group that in parentheses. Even though we don't see it, this is good practice. So there's our entire numerator, divide. Now let's do the same thing for our denominator. Closing that up. And just in case when you press this button on some scientific calculators, when you press the exponent button, it will not do this. What it will do is it will do something like this. And this is where it is very important to use parentheses for that exponent, unless you did go ahead and multiply those two numbers together. But I'm just gonna put them like this, exactly like I see it. Now on this calculator, I need to get out of the exponent. And then I need to close it up again, press enter, check it out. So based on these various techniques, we're still getting the exact same number. The monthly mortgage payment will be $948.42. And hopefully with all of these various approaches I've showed you here, you can apply this to pretty much any calculator as long as it has an exponent button and as long as it has parentheses. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.